Hey everybody, PC Outcast here, back with more Everlasting Summer. So we're about to head into the dark forest to an apparently haunted old camp with Lena. I and mean, what could possibly go wrong? Night fell on the camp. We walked slowly. Lena was next to me, but near but not too close. It was strange, but it looked like she wasn't afraid of anything. Moreover, she didn't seem to be bothered much about what we were doing, as if we weren't walking in the forest at night, but just watching a movie with other people playing leading roles. Actually, Electronique said that the old camp was not too far, and if we walked straight to it, then it would be hard to get lost. After a few minutes, I was completely unsure that we were walking straight, and after a few more, it started to seem that it would be a miracle for us to even get out of here. But I didn't want to lose face before Lena, so I tried to walk cheerfully. The forest was full of silent, flickering shadows and gleaming moonbeams. Moon the grass quietly rustled under, under our feet, and the branches rustled over our heads. Old oaks stood next to young birches. Large mushrooms emerged from under the, under the ladder, as if taking off their large hats in salute. On any other day, or rather at any other time of day, it would have looked really beautiful. It may be safe at night too, but nevertheless, I shuddered at each gust of wind. Look! Nina put it, pointed forward. I rubbed my eyes and saw a gap between the trees. Oh yeah, that's not creepy at all. In a minute, we were in a ra rather large clearing. In the middle of it stood a building, which looked like a village school or a kindergarten. What's with all the water? The paint was falling off the walls. There were several holes in the roof, like the aftermath of a bombing. And the glassless windows looked at us sadly, and a little threateningly. It was not a very pleasant sight. I couldn't remember how I'd imagined this place a moment ago. It was like all the images had been erased from my memory, replaced by this depressing graveyard view. Well, it's creepy. Lena was still standing silently, but a natural expression of fright appeared on her face. Do you think he's in there? I have no idea. If I was Shurik, then a haunted house would be the last place I'd hide in. Shall we go? I didn't, imag I didn't manage to answer. The moon appeared from behind the clouds and illuminated the clearing with new colors. Actually, in one color. The white of the grave. I could see more clearly the, by the distant... I could see more clearly the distant trees, the mists shrouding them. It looked... it felt like the temperature dropped several degrees, making me shiver. Are you afraid? Lena asked calmly. Honestly? She smiled almost imperceptibly and took my hand. It would have caused a storm of emotions in any other situation, but at that time it felt like a basic necessity. We slowly walked to the building. Mm. Walking through the playground, I pushed Mariger around, causing it to creak nastily as it made a half a turn. Lena shivered and grasped my hand tighter. Sorry, I probably just remembered my childhood. Did you like merry-go-rounds? Yes, actually, I don't know. I, I don't remember. Probably. Like... All children like them. I didn't like them. Why? I got dizzy when I rode them. No wonder if you spin too fast. I liked swings more. Well, you can get dizzy on a swing as well. But why would you? I don't know. That conversation had distracted me a little, and I stopped worrying about myself. Worrying myself about everything. About Shurik, about our night trip, about Lena. After all, this world is not so alien. Finally, we reached the doors. A lovely, lovely place. The inside of the old camp building reminded me of a kindergarten, the one I attended in my school. It, childhood? Oops. What was that? Yes, childhood. There you go. At first glance, even the room, ara room arrangement was the same. Shirk. Shirk! Grave-like silence replied to us. Even the, even the wind outside had calmed down. Looks like nobody's here. We should check anyway. Lena's courage still didn't cease to surprise me. 
Or should I say her lack of normal self-preservation instincts didn't? I don't know if this behavior is strange for this girl or not. Okay, let's do it. Hmm. It looks a little bit dangerous to me to uh, be trying to even look around this place. We thoroughly examined all the rooms of the old camp. I even ins inspected the attic. There were signs that people had visited this place everywhere. Newspapers, empty bottles, and other garbage, but there was no sign of Shurik. We returned to the hall where we had started our search. What should we do next? I have no idea. Lena sat on the steps and stared at her feet. I think we should go back. I began carefully. Late, and can just the two of us really search the entire forest for him? You may be right. She looked sad, and her expression let me know that the, re the search was not over yet. Well, I am. I waved my hands in resignation and sat next to her. We should think about the worst outcome. Are you saying... No, but are there any wild animals around? I doubt it. Lena calmed down at once. He may be sleeping somewhere. He'll wake up in the morning and return to the camp. Yes, of course. I jumped to my feet and started to walk in circles around the hall. I really wanted to leave this place to get out of out from the forest, but it was as if Lena's behavior was keeping me here. I wanted to go on trying to persuade her, but then I noticed something on the floor. It was a trap door. There were little heaps of garbage and dust around it. it must have been opened recently. Look. Do you think Sherks is there? Lena squatted and carefully pulled on the ha hatch's landle. Hatch's handle. <laughs> May not be Shirk, but someone surely used it recently. <clears throat> I'd already f regretted finding that damn gate to hell. Let's check it out. The trap door wasn't very heavy, so you could pull it without much effort. I directed the flashlight into it and saw a ladder going down a couple of meters. Looks like a cellar. Let's go down. I looked at Lena for a few moments, few moments trying to understand what was on her mind. Did she have a craving for adventure like Yolana? So where is her youthful spirit then? Or maybe she just went a bit nuts. Lena didn't seem like a crazy person, but anyway. Who even said she really is human and you can evaluate her with human behavior logic? That thought should have scared me, but somehow I didn't pay it any attention among the millions of other thoughts. Some of them were more important. For example, what could be down there? Hmm... I climbed, climbed down and looked around. What the heck is this? Everything is okay. After I made sure that there was nothing to be afraid of, I called Lena. We stood in the long corridor, which certainly wasn't a cellar. Its architecture more resembled KGB dungeons or a subway maintenance tunnel. I don't know which would be better. There were countless wires along the walls, fastened by metal hooks every half meter. There were lamps under the ceiling, covered by rusted shades. Rumbled concrete crunched under our feet unpleasantly. Shall we go? Lena, without any emotion. Where to? There? Well, yes. If What if Sherrick is there? What would he be doing there? In any case, I wasn't really able to refuse her today, so we forgot about her fear and headed, into, headed into the darkness. Ugh. Lena walked next to me, holding my hand. The silence of the dungeon was interrupted only by the sound of our steps and water dripping from the ceiling. We moved forward slowly, maybe too slowly. I suddenly felt a surge of claustrophobia. I gritted my teeth and squeezed the torch, but loosened my grip at once, fearful of breaking our only source of light. Lena kept silent, and her silence seemed louder than any words. I started to fear. Say something. Door. What? There's a door. She pointed forward. Oh my goodness. This is like a bunker. A fallout shelter? We came to a massive metal door with a biohazard sign. Oh, with biohazard, not, uh... I thought that was radiation. Hmm. Looks like a bomb shelter. Yes, I'd heard something about it. Why is it here? I have no idea. Maybe because of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Cuban? I estimated the approximate time 
of, in, of constructing the camp. Makes sense. However, building a bomb shelter here was like building an airport at Faggot in Northumberland, or Laycock in Wiltshire in the UK. What does that mean? It wasn't deep enough and too far from civilization. Well, it's fairly deep. I mean, it's all concrete. The door wheel dully creaked. I had to push it with all my strength before it turned a couple of times. I made up my mind and opened the door with difficulty. We entered the room, which seemed to be the main living quarters. There were some beds, cases, some scientific equip equipment. They'd been thoroughly prepared for a nuclear apocalypse. We didn't find any signs of Shurik here, here, there, though. Look! Nina was holding a flare gun and smiling. Why would I need it? To fight monsters. There are no monsters here. At least I wanted to believe that. If you say so, I guarantee it. I didn't want to upset her, so I tucked the flare gun into my belt. It might come in handy. We thoroughly searched the room once again. There were two exits. The first was the door we'd entered, and the other was another door exactly the same as the uh, in the left wall. For a moment, I felt excitement. The, the urge to reach the end of this labyrinth and to learn what puzzle awaited me there. Puzzle or prize? I don't know. However, there, this surely wasn't a computer game, and there is no option to save. Maybe with this? Lena offered me a rather big crowbar. Now, I'll give it a try without, a f without it first. Or if the door didn't want to budge. It only creaked nastily and the door wheel didn't turn a millimeter. Okay, give it to me. It was too easy with a crowbar. In the end, the obstacle collapsed, hitting the door loudly. The hinges were rusted completely through. I pointed the flashlight into the passageway. There was a corridor, just like the one we had come through, come here through. Let's go. It's like Lena was constantly driving me on. Where are you rushing to? Me? I'm not. He blushed in confusion. Again, what should I make of her? First, she doesn't fear a thing. Then she gets lost after a word. You look like you don't fear anything. I don't know. What should I fear? You will protect me anyway. She added, barely audibly. So Lena's counting on me. She believes in me, no matter what. Possible. Stupid, naive, but possible. I knew clearly that I couldn't protect anyone, even myself. Nothing is up to me in this world. The powers that brought me here could do anything. That didn't exactly mean that inevitable death awaited me in the end of the tunnel. It could be lying in wait anywhere in this camp. Let's go! I tried to walk faster, but Lena seemed to not be bothered by that, and she easily kept pace with me. This corridor was exactly the same as the previous one, in every last detail. There's nothing shocking about it, but at some point I got the feeling that we were walking in circles. The flashlight in my hand started to tremble visibly. The spot of light jumped all over the walls and the floor, and suddenly it let up a rather big hole. The hole wasn't too deep, and down below we could see rails. Hmm. What's down there? Looks like a mine. Shall we have a look? Why not go further along the corridor? I don't know. I think we should go down there. I estimated the height. It would be possible to pull ourselves out. Okay, let's check it out. I jumped down the hole and helped Lena to get down. It really was a mine. I wonder what they could have mined here. What minerals are there in this area? I don't know. Well, yeah, stupid question. It looks like there's not there are none now. We headed into the darkness. It was hard to walk because I couldn't choose where to where I trod. Wobbly wooden planks or uneven ground. I wasn't able to stick closer to the walls either. The narrowness of the tunnel forced us to stay between the rails, and I didn't want to let go of Lena's hand. Finally, we reached a fork. Just great. Where should we go? Where? I'm not certain that we'll be able to get out of here at all, especially if we're going to play Pac-Man. Play what? Never mind. We'll get lost. Oh, what if there is an exit, too? 
There may be one. What if there isn't? So should we go back? I bit my lip till it bled and yelled as loud as I could. Sherrick! The loud echo rebounded from every direction at once. Soil even fell from the ceiling in some places. See? And I will go on alone. What? I grinned stupidly. Alone? Where to? We must find Sherrick. He may be... Lena blushed at once and stared at the ground. No, 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 that won't do. If we go, we go together. Okay, then let's go. She smiled and took my hand. How did she manage that? But first we should... I took a sharp stone from the ground and scratched cross on one of the beams which supported the walls. Now we'll know where we started. This is idiotic. Well, that thing is clearly telling us to go left, so we are going to go left. Seems that there's another fork in the road. Oh, of course there is. Go left again. We came to some kind of miner's camp. Picks and helmets everywhere, a rusty wagon stood in the corner. All the items were so old, they dated from the beginning of the 20th century rather than the middle. Okay, can't speak, can't read Russian. No. Uh, is that just not translated? That's weird. But I sensed that exit was somewhere nearby, and so we went further. Seems that there's another fork in the road. Let's just keep going left. Seems that there's another fork in the road. Seems that there's another fork in the road. Uh, okay, that's not good. So we have to go right. And right again. Mm hmm. And right again. Uh oh. Did it literally just completely break? We're, we are actually going in circles. Okay, that's, that wasn't there. Finally, the tunnel had led us into a hall with a high ceiling. Although it hardly could be called a hall, it seemed something was mined here. Maybe coal or gold. The walls had been cut by pickaxes or pneumatic drills. This place, place was pitch black, so our only salvation was the flashlight. If it breaks, it's unlikely we'll ever get out of here. I noticed a red piece of cloth in, the, in its light. It was a pioneer necker, neckerchief. Shurik was obviously here somewhere. Shurik! 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 Only echoes answered us. A, a, a mouse, mousered us? He must not be too far away since we find, found this scarf here. Frankly speaking, I was mostly wondering where here actually was. Where could he have gone from here? There were no exits from this room. Certainly it was possible that there were other places in these tunnels we hadn't visited yet. That means we have to keep searching for him. Oh no. Seems to be yet another fork. Let's just keep going right this time. Around the next turn, a wooden door appeared in the light. At least it's something. What? At least it's not another fork. What's in there? We don't have any choice but to check it out. I pull. I strongly pulled the handle and opened the door. Creepy. There was a room behind it, which might be one of the maintenance rooms for the bomb shelter. Empty bottles and cigarette butts were scattered everywhere. The walls were all covered with scribbles. That means that there's another exit from here. I didn't want to believe the people who had left all that had come the same way as we did. Sadly, Shurik wasn't here. Oh. Slid down the wall to the floor. We must have been everywhere now. Not everywhere. Lena pointed to a door in the corner. It looked similar to the one leading into the bomb shelter. There probably should be an exit, as you said. Shall we go? Let's rest for a moment. Okay. Lena sat next to me, very close, and took my hand. It's alright. What do you mean? That we haven't found Shirk. We should think about getting out ourselves. We'll get out. 
Yes, I probably remember the way. Or at least, I thought that I remembered it. I'm not afraid at all. She suddenly said after a short pause, That's good. Because I'm with you. Suddenly, there came a noise from behind the door to the mine. I jumped up at once and started looking for something to use as a weapon. <laughs> the noise of heavy footsteps was getting closer. Ah! Finally, the door opened and Shirik appeared from behind it. In the silence, I froze, staring at him. There you are! Did you think you could hide from me? What? Did you think I wouldn't find you? But I did! He wasn't saying that was for sure. His face was distort distorted by a scary grimace. His eyes gleamed behind his glasses. The missing pioneer ha held a metal rod in his hand. Are you mad? It's us! Yeah, I can see it's you. He took a couple of steps toward us. I instinctively shielded... Uh, yeah, instinctively shielded Lena. Do you think you could make a fool of me? Leading me here and there? To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. And I followed, I followed. Oh boy. He raised the metal rod. Everything after that was like it happened in slow motion. Shurik charged at us. Me pushing Lena out of the way. The rod slowly arcing towards my head. My hand with a flashlight going up. Uh oh. Pulling all of that, complete darkness, rapid breathing, blood hammering in my temples, silence, dreadful. Heavy silence merging with the darkness. I moved my hand, trying to find the wall, when I felt someone's touch. Don't be afraid. I heard a familiar voice near me. Where are you, you damned lunatic? I shouted. He left. Which way did he go? Where to? Lena's voice didn't sound too calm, but certainly it didn't sound like it should in such circumstances. Calm down. She hugged me tenderly and pressed her body against mine. I tried to gather my senses to recover my breath to adapt to the darkness. What should we do next? You have a gun. Well, who do I shoot? It's loaded with a flare. She might be right. Took the gun from my belt, pointed it to the side, and fired. The room was illuminated by a bright red light. The flare, lying in the corner, looked like a firework or a sparkler. Let's go quickly, it won't burn for too long. Where to? Lena pointed to the second door. It wasn't hard to open it, and we headed into the darkness. Uh... Flare burned more dimly with every second. I stumbled with every step, even fell down a couple of times, but didn't slow my pace. If it goes out... Finally, we saw light in front of us and came to the ladder, leading to a grating... Came to a ladder, leading to a grating in the ceiling. The flare hissed and went out. Thank God. Turned out that we were right under the statue of Jenda. The grating was rather sturdy, but we managed to open it after breaking the bolts of the flashlight. After reaching the surface, I collapsed on the grass, exhausted. That was terrible. Lena sat next to me. Just dreadful. By that time, I didn't give a damn about this world, the camp, the 410 bus, or my previous life. The strangest, nastiest thing was that there was nothing supernatural in these events. Shirk just went crazy. Insane. Nothing strange about it. I would have, too, in his position. Lena patted my head tenderly and smiled. It's all over now. I don't know. There's a crazy pioneer in the woods. You could even say a maniac killer. I think he's going to be all right. All right? I'm not sure about that. The most important thing is that we're okay. She still smiled. How can he be so calm? I told you before that I have nothing to be afraid of when I'm with you. Indeed. I might have saved Lena and myself back there. But it was only by chance, nothing more. If Shurik had been swifter. Or crazier. Thanks for the compliment. You're welcome. Though we still should have stayed here in the first place. You're probably right. She said calmly. I got really sleepy. Because of stress, of exhaustion, of how late at night it was. We should go to sleep. But I'd have to stand up and walk to the leader's cabin. I wasn't ready for that. My eyes closed just for a moment. Uh. Stairs looked down at me from the sky. Thousands of them. Even millions. Now their light didn't seem to be so distant and cold. On the contrary, they twinkled to me. As if whispering among themselves, telling merry fairy tales and eager 
competition. But a galaxy far, far away in violet fluffy piglets. About my mysterious asteroid about mysterious asteroid belts where ships have disappeared. About a fearless starship captain and her brave crew. About exceptional treasures and unreachable peaks of a planet on the edge of the universe. I wonder, was that a dream? I lifted myself a little and realized my head was in Lena's lap. Did I sleep long? I asked in confusion, but didn't rush to get up. I don't know. I don't have a watch. She laughed. Approximately? Well, maybe 20 minutes. Oh, that's okay then. I lay down again, feeling nice and calm like never before. The events of the night were becoming distant, as if I was starting to forget them, like the story the stars were telling me. Shirk has come back. What? I jumped on, on my feet instantly. There he is, sleeping on the bench. Nina pointed to the be benches in surprise. And what are you? You were sleeping so peacefully that I didn't want to wake you up. I felt a shiver of fear, because such behavior was not just strange. It was not just inappropriate. It scared me more than Shurik's ins insanity in the dungeon. A lunatic who half an hour ago tried to kill us arrives, lies on a nearby bench and falls asleep, and she just sits here? Nothing to worry about. He just seemed to be a little off. Lena got confused and blushed. He walked unsteadily and didn't look toward us, and if I'd made a noise. She was about to cry. Okay, don't worry. There's some logic to her words. She probably did the right thing. In any case, we had to interrogate Shirk thoroughly. I jumped up, walked quickly to the bench she was sleeping on, and slapped him. Ouch! He woke up at once. What the hell? What are you doing, you bastard? What? Shirk stared at me and with a scared and, moreover, sane look. What was that all about down there? What? Where? In the dungeon, in the mine, in the bomb shelter. Did you go completely nuts? I don't understand you. He looked around. Why am I here? Where should you be in your opinion? Oh, wait. I know. You should be in an asylum. I went to the old camp in the morning for the spare parts, and then... Do you remember anything after that? Lena asked after, walking up to us. Yes, I... and I... Don't pretend... I said calmly and sat next to him. It really looked like he wasn't lying, though. I don't understand anything. It's unscientific. Who cares? Don't think that I trust you. Memory loss can't can't occur. Just Shirk talked to himself, mumbling something, not paying any attention to paying us any attention. Let's go, Lena said quietly. Shall we just leave him here? He's not in his right mind. He has to sleep. It's dangerous to leave the psycho alone. He may strangle Electronique with an induction coil in the night. It's going to be all right, trust me. I had no reason not to trust her. However, I didn't have any reason to trust her either. On the other hand, who cares now? I wanted to fall asleep as quickly as possible. Okay. We left Sherrick, who was still mumbling something to himself. Ugh. We're here. What? Where? I have to go further on. Lena smiled. I hadn't thought about anything all the way here, just followed her, and hadn't noticed that we'd come up to Olga's cabin. Yes. Thank you. For today. It's nothing to thank me for. It's just good that we came back alive. We'll see what Sherrick has to say tomorrow. Thanks anyway. She said mysteriously and averted her eyes. You're welcome. Well, it's time for me to go. Lena quickly turned around and walked quickly in the direction of her cabin. I suddenly had a thought that something about that was a bit off. Not quite right. After all that had happened, just, well, it's time for me to go. Usually it goes differently in such situations, doesn't it? I have no idea what, to, what I expected, though. Exhaustion hit me again. Walking with difficulty, I entered the cabin. The leader was sitting on my bed. Semyon. She started to talk sadly. Where have you been? Well, I... Prepared for a scolding. I didn't expect that reaction. I went to look for Shirk. Alone? Um, uh, no, I'll tell her I was with Lena. No, with Lena. So... What about Shirk? 
Looks like Olga was really worried about the fate of the lost pioneer. What's so strange about that? The leader can treat her work lightly, but it doesn't mean that she's a heartless person. He's okay. As okay as he could be in such a situation. That's good. Go to sleep now. What? Wait, but... She turned the light out quickly, showing that the conversation is over, and I couldn't ask anything. Though, should I? Ask why she didn't scold me? Hmm... Still, Lena... What happened today? My thoughts slowed their pace before stopping completely. Holy crap, this is getting weird and weirder and weirder. What is going on in this place? More importantly, what is going on with me? I guess we'll uh, find out in the next episode. Maybe, probably not. But we'll find out something new in the next episode. I'll see you then.